Welcome to this special satsang today, Easter. This energy of the Lord Jesus is very strong, pervading everywhere. So, thank you, all of you, for joining us on this special satsang. We begin our meditation by chanting some mantras. These mantras, they're called moksha mantras, mantras for liberation. In every kind of culture and practice, which is called spiritual practice, mantras are repeated. Here, these mantras are called moksha mantras, mantras that have to do with the loving aspect of the divine. I just have a, as you, a no fear, no apprehension that I might be saying the mantra is wrong or it doesn't matter. Once the heart is pure and you're worshipping or relating to the divine with a good mind, good intention, with adoration and love, repeating and listening to these mantras will help you in this instance meditation to withdraw the mind very easily and focusing on the divine. Tonight we will especially focus on the Lord Jesus, God manifested, incarnated, so many times in different ways, in different forms, to meet the needs of that, or that time, the urgent need of that time. This time, Jesus incarnated, the Lord incarnated as Jesus, to deliver to humanity the highest teaching. So, after the chanting of the mantras, I'll guide you very briefly into the basic steps to meditation. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय Sit up straight. Make the spine, neck, and head in one vertical straight line. Relax the body. Take a few deep breaths, full yogic breath. As you inhale, filling the abdomen, chest, shoulders. Exhale slowly and continuously. Try to make your exhalation longer than the inhalation. No tension, no stress. Just fill your lungs up and exhale smoothly, continuously. Take a few deep breaths like this. Keep your mind. Focused on the breathing as you inhale and exhale. Continue like that. Now let go of the breathing. Let this breath flow normally in and out. And withdraw the mind completely from all thoughts and distractions. And focus the mind at the point between the eyebrows. This point is referred to as the Ajna Chakram. The third eye, it is a seat of consciousness. So train your mind to rest at that point. Every time you become aware that your mind has moved away, consciously bring it back to this point of focus. In time with practice, You'll become aware at that point. You will feel the pulse. You could reuse the rhythm of that pulsation to repeat your mantra. If you don't have a mantra, mentally, continuously, repeat Om. Oh. So universal mantra, Om is the word, the beginning of all creation. It is what started this whole creation, that vibration, as a word. If you don't have a mantra, just simply repeat Om mentally, continuously. Keeping the attention on the Torah. As your mind becomes absorbed in the mantra, you will experience waves of shanti, of peace, flooding your body and mind. If that continues for a while, it will take you into a deep state of relaxation, concentration which eventually will lead into meditation. 
and eventually into the transcendental state called the fourth Turiya Samadhi, Nirvana, so many names to try to express to you about this fourth dimension, the fourth state. In that state, you'll experience that you are divine. You're not creating divinity. You are divine. You are the spirit, the soul, the Atman. But you're not aware of it because your identification is with the body, senses, mind, intellect, ego, and so on. So spiritual practice or yoga should take you step by step to that awareness of your higher self, who you are, that you are divine. That experience is referred to as enlightenment. You're being enlightened to the truth of who you are, that you are divine. So we continue, keeping the mind withdrawn at the point between the eyebrows, mentally, continuously, you repeat your mantra, which is the word that expresses the vibration that expresses your, your ideal. Tonight, we are keeping our attention on the Lord Jesus. You could repeat, Om Jesus, or just Om. Eventually, that will take you into complete withdrawal of the mind, focus, concentration, it leads into meditation and into the transcendental level. Continue silently.
Continue your meditation with chanting, chanting of mantras. This set of mantras have been arranged by my guru, Swami Nada Brahmanandaji, in the Shivananda Ashram. And there is sung in all the ashrams, Shivananda Ashram and Divine Life Society centers all over the world. And uh, the same sequence for as you invoke the blessings of Ganesha and Saraswati, then your Guru, and then Moksha Mantras, the Maha Mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Narayanaya, and so on. So they're all Moksha Mantras and it's arranged in this sequence.
Tonight I have sing one of the bhajan. Bhajans are like hymns. Sometimes they are in praise of the Lord. Sometimes they are philosophical in meaning. This one is more philosophical in meaning. And it's in one of my CDs, Bhajan 2.
scriptures it is expressed that when it is necessary when evil is overshadowing good or when it's necessary for 
humanity to receive higher knowledge, the Lord incarnates in whatever form, in whatever place necessary to inspire the humanity to come back on the path of righteousness, to strive for enlightenment. 2,000 years ago, the Lord incarnated to give humanity higher teaching, higher knowledge. For what? For liberation, for enlightenment. He, was, he came as Lord Jesus. We relate to Lord Jesus as a very enlightened yogi. Whatever he taught was the highest truth for the sole purpose of humanity to follow it and to purify the body-mind so that you can reach that state of awareness of your own divinity. Every time, everything that Jesus taught is what we refer to as yoga. He gave so many disciplines, so many knowledge, so much instructions, guidance for you to take care of this physical body, to gain and maintain good health. Master Shivananda emphasized that you should be involved in an integrated practice. My Guru Swami Vishnudevananda Ji expressed and encouraged you even for the purpose of gaining and maintaining good health, five practices that you should be involved in. And that is proper exercise, proper breathing, proper relaxation, proper diet, positive thinking. Lord Jesus taught this. He taught people how to exercise, to breathe, go into the open field, breathe deeply. How to cleanse yourself, free yourself from gross impurities, he taught people all the kriyas, how to take animals and all of that. Taught proper diet, very emphatically, that you not to eat meat. And this body is your temple. Do not desecrate it. Keep it pure, clean temple of God. Most of his teaching is to help you to purify, purify the mind, purify the mind. And through this, by following the yamas and the niyamas faithfully, you're able to rise above the lower nature and the mind becomes purified, and you shall see God. He very clearly said, the pure in mind, pure in heart, shall see God. How do you purify the mind? How do you purify the heart? By following my teaching. Very simple teaching he gave. Love, love, serve, give, be charitable. Master Shivananda summarized this whole teaching by huh? serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize. Through service, through loving, through giving, you are freeing the mind, freeing the heart from lust and greed and selfishness. This is how you purify the mind. This is how you purify your heart. Without a doubt, 
to the extent that you're able to do this, your awareness becomes higher and higher until you realize you're able to meditate, and then realize who you are. Sort of love, give, purify. Then meditation comes naturally. Meditation is a state that you reach. It's not something that you're doing, where people try to impress on you that this meditation, that meditation, my technique is better than yours, and so on. Everything that you're doing that you call yoga, sadhana, is to help you to purify the body and mind. The bhajan, also very, the most difficult thing for the saints, the yogis, the gurus, is to help you to understand, to realize, to appreciate this human birth. And for you to understand clearly, where did you come from? Why are you here? Where are you going? What, is, what happens after death? And to get this knowledge, you go to the saint, all of their teaching, learn from the gurus, the enlightened beings. And they'll tell you clearly that your goal and purpose in life is to realize that you are divine. You follow their teaching, which is very simple, it's not complicated, man. Sir, love, give. That's all Jesus taught, emphatically. Sir, love, give. Purify. The mind becomes more and more purified. When you sit for meditation, naturally the mind is withdrawn. And you experience that state of meditation. Meditation is a cessation of all the uh, turbulence that is taking place in your mind. All the yamas, the niyamas, the do's and the don'ts and so on. How to live your life according to these basic teaching. You'll experience more and more purity of the mind. And your awareness of this divine is on a higher and higher level. Until you reach that point where you meditate. Meditation is a state where the mind... There are no thoughts in the mind. We're able to transcend body consciousness, body senses, mind, intellect, ego. And in that state of meditation, there is no awareness of time and space. And that is the state of meditation. That's why to the extent that you're able to purify the mind, when you reach that state, there is no more thoughts. You transcend time and space. When that state is maintained for a while, then naturally you glide into that fourth state that is called samadhi, nirvana, transcendental state. So many Names are used to indicate that state that you will reach, that fourth dimension, where you experience that you are divine. That is what Jesus experienced. I and my Father are one. He's in me, I'm in He, I'm that. And I command you to be as perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. Of years, they crucify you, they burn you, they torture you for even thinking about that. And that is what the Lord taught. How do you purify your mind and heart? Follow my teachings, which is very simple. Love, serve, love, give. Give until it hurts. Give with a cup full, press down, run over. Just give. Serve, serve with all your heart. So he taught Hatha Yoga, he taught Karma Yoga. Hmm? 
You have to be of service, service to the humanity. Serve the Lord with all your heart, might, and soul. As you continue to elevate your consciousness, you start to experience this Lord everywhere, especially in humanity. That's why great souls like Sister Teresa, Mahatma Gandhi, they demonstrate this in their life. Sister Teresa was asked one time, you must feel very great that you're serving all these poor people. She said, I'm not serving people, I'm serving my Lord. I see my Lord in these poorest of the poor. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, it's also Bhakti Yoga. You're serving the Lord. Lord Jesus taught Gyan Yoga Atman. You reach that state of experience when the mind becomes purified, the heart becomes pure. It's not something you take out and you brush it and you clean it with detergent. You purify it by following my teaching. Apply it in your life. Live. And his teaching was very simple, man, not complicated only for intellectual giants. Serve, love, give, give. Then you're able to purify the mind to the extent that you do this, the mind becomes more and more purified. You sit in that state of quietness. The mind becomes calm, steady, peaceful. That is a state of meditation. Meditation is not, oh, when you sit, then I'm meditating. Every moment of your existence, you should live your life in such a way that every moment helps you to rise above your lower nature of lust and greed and jealousy and envy, hatred, and so on. That's how you purify the mind, purify the heart. Removing the veil of ignorance and delusion and superstition. Most people's relationship with yoga and with spirituality is immersing themselves deeper and deeper in superstition, ignorance, more and more bondage. Very simple. You go to the saints, you follow the teachings of the saints, the yogis, your guru. They'll teach you the science of how to purify the mind, how to refine and purify all the systems in the three bodies. Physical body, astral body, causal body. In the physical body, there are so many systems, 11 systems mainly, muscular system, skeletal system, digestive system, and so on. In the astral body, you have the pranamaya kosha, energy system, mental system, intellectual system. All of these need to be purified. This is what yoga, or the way you live your life, you say the divine life. It works on these systems to refine and purify. Here we call it Sampurna Yoga. This is what Master Shivananda encouraged. Because you're not just a physical body, uh, energy system, you're not just a mental and so on. You're mainly spirit, the soul, the Atman. So you have to work on all these systems, 
and it's very simple. We encourage that you get involved in an integrated system to satisfy, to harmonize all these systems in your three bodies. So we do Hatha Yoga here, Raja Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga. Because I studied Nada Yoga with my Guru. I lived with him for seven years, continued to study with him for 15 years. The science of Nada Yoga, sound vibration. Or the tuning to that subtle aspect, sattvic aspect of sound to attune your mind to the divine vibration, the nada, that you are. So integrating intelligently these six main systems of yoga, we call it Sampurna Yoga. And this helps to accelerate this process of refinement and purification is not a one-sided practice because you're not just a physical body, that you're only involved in asana and breathing exercise and so on. You integrate it. Sampurna. Sampurna means complete, full. It's not a one-sided practice. That doesn't mean that you come here to practice, to study and practice, that it will be deficient in any way or form in the physical practice of asana and so on. So those of you who come here, you get involved in, in say, two weeks, two weeks, 200 hours, teacher's training course. You don't necessarily have to want to be a teacher to be involved in it. Just spend two weeks in learning about the science, this divine yeah, science and art of how to live a divine life. And you experience it through the practice. It gives you a good foundation. It helps you to continue your sadhana, your practice. Sadhana means conscious self-effort to be, live a life that helps you to evolve, to accelerate this level of purification and refinement. Sadhana, conscious self-effort. This is what all the saints and yogis and gurus try to encourage you. This life is very short. You only come here for a few days. Do some sadhana. To be able to do that, you get proper guidance. Go to the appropriate place. Always be in the company of saints and yogis, enlightened beings. They will teach you how to be involved in sadhana. That will elevate your consciousness. You try to wake you up. What are you doing with your life, man? This life is so short. So brief, so transient. Every day that is passing is taking you closer to death. Death means the, the death of this body. You have to drop it. It's, there's nothing you can do about it. Every day that's passed is taking you one day closer to that state to that point, to that reality. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with, with yourself to help you to free yourself from bondage? Bondage is ignorance, egoism, attachment, aversion, desire to cling to life. No matter how much you're clinging to it, you have to leave it. That is the reality. One day you have to go. When are you going? What are you going with? Property and money and relations and so on. You got to go alone, man. No matter how much somebody says, I love you, I love you, I love you. 
At the time of death, you got to go alone. Nobody will go with you. Is it good karma or bad karma? And that is within your control. That is what you are creating all the time, every moment, karma. Is it good? That will go with you. Is it bad? That will go with you. If the good karma outweighs the bad karma, when you that will determine also where you born, how you born, in what condition, what place, what time, and so on. Even simple things like this, man, simple basic truths of this existence, people are not exposed to. So you say, saying, say, where did you come from? Kaha se aya, kaha jayenga. Where did you come from? Where are you going? Basic things like this, people don't understand. And the, na the nature of this world, what is the world? Eh? The masses of humanity. People keep following the masses. And they are telling you, what they are telling you? You want to be happy? Have pleasure. The more pleasure you have, the more you'll be happy. In order for you to have more pleasure, you have to have the means for it. And you see this insanity everywhere. Everybody's busy, 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 trying to grab, to hold on to all the means for what? For pleasure. You live in a day and an age where you see, and through inference you can learn. People are able to amass unimaginable wealth. And they try to indulge more and more in more and more pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Does it free them? No, it keeps them in more bondage. It, bad habits, addiction, and so on. Develop good habits, man. Do sadhana. Be involved in practices and knowledge that will continue to free you. Get addicted to sadhana. Get addicted to practice that will elevate you, continue to free you. And that is your choice. You can choose freedom or you choose bondage. And the knowledge is there. There's no deficiency in guidance and knowledge. But you go to the nightclub, you go to eh, with the friends and this and that, and all you following the trends. Friends help you to follow the trends. And what are the trends? That's what you get from friends. You want to know the past to enlightenment, associate with wise people, satsanga. Associate with wise people. They will inspire you, guide you on the path to enlightenment. That's what Sampurna Yoga is about. That is what this ashram is about. That is what Yogi Hari is about. That is what Yogi Hari's ashram is about. Not to teach you some kind of gimmick in order to make money and this and that and that. That's why I lower the price of the course just to meet basic expense, to run this ashram and to provide for those who come here to learn. That is by conviction, that is by experience, this Sampurna system and approach to yoga will help you in so many ways. I started yoga at the age of 22, formally, consciously, because I was all the time on medication, classified as a medicated incurable. And more and more, getting more and more in, uh, in 
immersed in this kind of thought and this kind of philosophy. The moment I get introduced to yoga, man, I start to experience freedom. Freedom from medication, freedom from sickness and disease and discomfort. Because I knew it was the truth, I experienced it. I continue, I delved into it fully. At the age of 30, I got back all my health. I was like a 16-year-old youth. No medication. Yarn and yarn and yarn for higher knowledge, a guru. My guru appeared. At the age of 30, I retired from the world. Immersed myself, me and my family, in the ashram, my guru's ashram. Delving deeper and deeper into the deeper aspect of yoga. May my guru encourage me, open your own ashram. Wherever I live was my ashram. No matter how simple the dwelling is, my ashram. Yearned for a place where people can experience a place that is serene, calm, peaceful. We planted a lot of trees here. When we got it, it was a dump. Me and my disciples diligently work all the time to create an environment where people can experience what it is and how possible it is to withdraw yourself, retreat from the craziness of the world and get knowledge of how you can Take care of your health, basically health, and not just health of body, emotionally, mentally, and so. Working on this place nine years ago, I broke my back trying to lift a big boulder, just like that. Lose awareness just for a few, one second, broke my back. I was bedridden for a while. Everybody suggesting surgery, surgery. They wanted $80,000 to do surgery. I couldn't afford anything like that, man. The only thing helped me is yoga. Now I'm able to move about. I enjoy doing, working in the garden. Recently we planted a hundred varieties of mango trees. Now they start to bear. <laughs> a few days ago, we reaped from one tree. Oh, and it's so divine. Ras, divine. Divinity, nectar. Coconut trees, we just planted 120 coconut trees. Next month, we'll get lychees, 300 lychee trees. It's the best variety, it's called sweetheart. There's a small little seed, and the rest of it is pulp, and it's so divine. To me, this is my heaven I created, and those who disciples who live here, that is their experience. Some people come, they stay for a few weeks, a few months, some few years. It's your ashram, come enjoy it. All the fruits that I have planted, anybody can reap it. But my fruit, my karma that I am creating, only I can reap it. And I want it to be good karma. Because that's all I'll take with me. Not all the mango trees and the lychees and the this and the that. But I'm here while I'm in this embodiment. I appreciate it. It's divine blessing. I mean, it's my heaven. 
I have no real desire to go this place, that place, that place. Once I went to my guru, can I take you back to America? No. Hariji, my parade is finished. I feel like that. I don't have to parade this place, that place, that place. This is my heaven. I appreciate it. This blessing. You can come and reap it, my enjoy it. Reap the fruits. <laughs> and God is so had nature. It's so abundant. We just reaped turmeric. We have over two thousand pounds of it. We don't know how to market it. Help in the distribution of it. It's appreciated. The students, the disciples here, all they know how to work. <laughs> Planting vegetables. They ask them, what are you going to do with it? Coming so much. We already have 2,000 pounds of, of turmeric. We planted whatever we're planting is beneficial to people. We know it's organic. We don't use pesticides and fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and so on. So come, spend two, two weeks every month. The first two weeks of every month, we have the teacher's training course. Take advantage, I make it available, affordable, so that more and more people can take advantage of this opportunity to be involved in the knowledge and the practice of yoga, sadhana, or enlightenment. Everyone that comes here, they experience how beneficial it is. Thank you all again for joining us in this special day, this special period, teaching of Jesus, Lord Jesus. For me, he has taught the highest teaching. There's nothing that Jesus taught that is not divine, divine not. And divine knowledge like that only comes from a divine source, soul, divine manifestation. Great soul like Master Shivananda and so on. They continue that. Guru Parampara, Guru to disciple, Guru to disciple. The source of it is the Lord Himself. And thou art that. You can elevate your consciousness to that point where you identify with this ocean of divinity. Jesus reached that level in his evolution where he realized the highest truth. I and my father are one. He's in me, I am in he, I am that. He was tempted by the lower mind. Jesus, you can have all the wealth you want, all the power, all the pleasure. Take it, take it, take it. He had reached that state in his evolution. He can have anything he wants. All the pleasure, all the... His higher mind, discriminating mind, asked the question, simple question. What use is it for me to gain this whole world and lose my soul? Because he knows, he only knows how much effort it took, what a process it is to reach enlightenment, to realize I am divine, I am the spirit, the soul, the Atman. 
Why should I try to grab onto this world eh, and lose that? That I've spent millions and billions of lifetimes to experience, to know I am divine. Simple truths like that. The more you contemplate it, the more you live it, the more it becomes reality to you. Your real treasure is your spiritual evolution. That is what you have to guide, guard. It's very easy for you to slip and slide, man. The higher up you go, the more precarious it is. So you have to be very careful how you live this life. How you can be careful? By having your ideals. What is your ideal? Why are you here? Where did you come from? Where are you going? What happens after death? And all, this, all this knowledge is there. It's not a speculation. Will you choose to believe that or you choose to believe the friends and the trends? I choose to believe the scripture. I choose to believe the teaching of the masters. I choose to believe what my intelligence know as truth. There's nothing superstitious about it. It makes sense, doesn't contradict logics or reasoning. Most importantly, it doesn't contract, contradict the, the experience of the masters, those who have followed this path. The experience is same. You see them, the evolution, how much they have evolved. Of course, after sorry, you don't, you can't even fathom their experience, their evolution. Absolute faith. You have to have the, that faith, unshakable faith. When you reach a certain point, that's not difficult for you because you see the life of Jesus and so on. Very clearly outlined it. I am not this body, I'm not this mind, I'm not this image. He demonstrated in, in his life, man. He didn't try to save the body. He came for the higher purpose of delivering higher teaching for people. How many people can relate to it? Love your enemies. Hmm? They hit you on one cheek, turn the other one. Are you there? Give and give and give until it. Hmm? You can't give it. Yeah, give it. Nothing belongs to you. Are you there? You must know. But the ideal is there. Live your life uh, in a such a way that you can experience it for yourself, not a speculation. And more and more as you continue that way, you experience freedom, liberation. You know, sometime in the future, every moment you can experience freedom, liberation, enlightenment. You're being enlightened, step by step. So my prayer to you uh, today is for you to have good health, peace of mind, and continue progress on the spiritual path. Oh. Prabhu Anandadata 
ज्ञान हमको दीजिए तीघ्र सारे दुर्गुणों को दूर हम से कीजिए लीजिए हमको शरण में हम सदाचारी बने ब्रह्मचारी धर्म रक्षक वीर व्रत धारी बने हे प्रभो आनंद दाता ज्ञान हमको दीजिए प्रेम से हम गुरु जनों के नित्य ही सेवा करे सत्य बोले झूत त्यागे मेल आपस में करे हे प्रभो आनंद दाता ज्ञान हमको दीजिए निंद किसी की हम किसी से भूल कर भी ना करे दिव्य जीवन हो हमारा तेरे अश गाया करे हे प्रभो आनंद दाता ज्ञान हमको दीजिए O oh Lord the giver of bliss bestow on me divine wisdom quickly take very far away all my bad habits and replace them with good ones take me my lord who have surrendered unto thee and make me one of noble qualities may i live a life a disciplined life and may i always serve my guru with love and devotion may i embrace truthfulness and abandon untruth always help me my lord to never be disrespectful to anyone may i never forget thee my lord may i always sing your praise may i always live the life divine o lord the giver of bliss bestow on me divine wisdom o adorable lord of mercy and love salutations and prostrations unto thee thou art omnipresent omnipotent omniscient thou art satchidananda thou art existence knowledge and bliss absolute thou art the indweller of all beings grant us an understanding heart equal vision balanced mind faith devotion and wisdom grant us in a spiritual strength to resist temptation and control the mind free us from egoism lust anger greed hatred and jealousy fill our hearts with divine virtues let us behold thee in all these names and forms Let us serve thee in all these names and forms. Let us ever remember thee. Let us sing thy glories. Let thy name be ever on our lips. Let us abide in thee forever and ever. Bolo Satguru Shivananda Maharaj ki. All devotees and disciples and aspirants ki. Hari Om Tat